Salam. I'm going to say a few words on apartheid and its impact on world peace and justice. And when we talk about apartheid, we're talking about that system that was notable in South Africa, apartheid South Africa, dismantled almost three decades ago. And as a result of that experience, we have a number of principles quite well set out in the Durban Declaration, the World Conference Against Racism, Racial Discrimination, Xenophobia and Related Intolerance, the Declaration and Program of Action 2002, and its principal reference point today is to apartheid Israel, the colonisation, the apartheid state that exists in occupied Palestine today. So there's a great need to focus on the apartheid in Palestine today, and a couple of recent reports have outlined um, the problems and the character of that apartheid system. The report by Richard Falk and Virginia Tilley from 2017 pointed out that Israel remains uh, maintains an apartheid regime. It is a state designed to ensure the domination of a racial group over all others. In four legal domains, it has laws which prevent Palestinian citizens of Israel obtaining equal rights. It has permanent residency laws which preserve a highly insecure legal status for Palestinians. And it has military law which rules over a permanently alien Palestinian population in the occupied territories. And it has a policy which prevents Palestinian refugees and involuntary exiles from returning to their homes. Now, it should be obvious, and indeed it's spelt out well in this declaration, that apartheid is a form of injustice so severe that there can be no peace under that system. And that is why apartheid states are considered a crime against humanity and something that must be dismantled. There is a universal responsibility to see the dismantling of those uh, apartheid states. International law, as Falk and Tilly point out, prohibits apartheid as a crime against humanity. Now, recently there was an Israeli report which said effectively the same thing, a legal opinion by Michael Sfad for the Israeli group Yesh Din, which pointed out that the crime of humanity, the crime against humanity of apartheid is being committed in the West Bank. The perpetrators are Israelis. The victims are Palestinians. The crime is committed because the Israeli occupation is no ordinary occupation regime, but one that comes with a gargantuan colonization project that has created a community of citizens um, of the occupying power in the occupied territory. The crime is committed because in addition to colonizing the occupied territory, the occupying power has gone to great lengths to cement its domination over the occupied residents and to ensure their inferior status. The crime of apartheid has been committed in the West Bank because in this context of a regime of domination and oppression of one national group by another, the Israeli authorities implement policies and practices that constitute inhuman, inhuman acts as the term is defined in international law. And that's why we're talking about a crime against humanity here, one that must be dismantled. Now, in terms of dismantling apartheid regimes and bringing about any sort of real sense, the first principle is resistance, and the resistance of the Palestinian people, including the steadfastness of the Palestinian people remaining on their land. And that is why today over half the people in occupied Palestine are those uh, disenfranchised Palestinian Arab populations. Secondly, there's a legitimacy battle which those of us outside Palestine have to engage in. The delegitimizing campaign remains central to the international struggle. And the third element there really is for the liberation of Palestine, for the dismantling of apartheid in Palestine, depends on the right constellation of forces, the disunity and crisis amongst the colonists and their sponsors, and the unity and preparedness amongst the resistance and its allies, particularly its regional allies. We've seen examples of that in the past. For example, 200 years ago, the Haitian Revolution, where Haiti gained its independence by a revolt of slaves when the colonial power, France, was distracted by revolution and war. And more recently, two decades ago in East Timor, when the little country of East Timor gained and then reclaimed its independence, both in the mid-70s and in the early part of this century, following internal crises in the two successive occupying powers. So that's what I think we should stress and remember these days, that resistance is the key, that legitimacy campaign internationally is the important corollary, and that the right constellation of forces is going to be define the moment in which apartheid can be dismantled in occupied Palestine.